videographer today. He is at work, but we're still going to continue with another lesson. So today is Wednesday, March 25th, and we're going to be talking about chapter five of Frankenstein. Now, before we read chapter five, we've been delving into these themes a lot. We've looked at parent-child relationships. We've looked at beauty and ugliness. We've looked at rejection, and we've looked at fate and destiny. These are the major themes that we'll be studying in chapter one through five and throughout the novel, okay? So yesterday we talked about how an author can develop a theme, right? I said Mary Shelley likes to look at a topic from a lot of different angles. So she likes to look at parent-child relationships that are good and bad, and by the end of the novel, you've kind of got to decide what's her overall message on parent-child relationships. Same with beauty, same with fate. She's gonna show you a lot of different angles and then you get to decide, what do you think about it? So that's how Mary Shelley's gonna develop this theme. But how do we as readers, as literary analysts, how do we keep track of that, okay? And that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today, leading you into your post-reading assignment. Okay, so we're gonna talk about how do you keep track of how an author develops a theme and why does it matter? So. These are the four themes that we're looking at. Parent-child relationships, beauty and ugliness, rejection, and fate or destiny, all right? So as we start to track these, we are gonna use a graphic organizer, okay? And we are gonna track how Mary Shelley develops this theme over the course of chapters one to five. So let me show you a little bit about what that looks like. So I'm going to erase up here our agenda. Our agenda today is Wednesday lesson, this video you're in right now. Then you're going to listen to the chapter five read aloud. Then you're going to watch the chapter five annotations video. That one is critical today because I go through the instructions for the evidence tracker and I also give you examples and a way to contact me if you need help. And then finally, you're going to work on your evidence tracker. There's no check in Google Doc for chapter five because I do want you to spend time working on that evidence tracker, okay? So our essential question is today is, how does Shelley build the themes throughout chapters one through five? The only way to answer that question is to know what she does with each theme in chapters one through five. So we've got to keep track of them in a graphic organizer. So let me kind of show you the methodology here, and then when you get to chapter five annotations, you'll be able to watch that video in detail to get more instructions. So when we're tracking our major themes, we're gonna set this up like a chart. We've got theme one, two, three, and four. Now, there's only one way that an author can add in information and that's directly through the text. So they're gonna provide you quotes in the text that build a theme. So the first thing that you need to keep track of is those quotes that we've highlighted that emphasize the theme. You can pull quotes directly from the text, okay? Remember, you went through and you highlighted things green to show parent-child relationships. So when you're looking for a quote that shows parent-child relationships, you just go back to your text and find anything highlighted in green. You've already done a lot of the work for yourself. Then you've gotta be able to find it again. So you'll need a page number. Now this is the trickiest part. The quote and the page number, easy as pie. You can find it quickly in your text, easily. You've highlighted it, you've got it there. But now you've got to analyze it. And when I say analyze in this case, what I mean is you've got to tell me how that quote shows the theme. So if you pulled a quote from the text that says parent-child relationships, but you don't really know why, you don't see the mother-daughter relationship, you don't see the father-son relationship, then that's not a good quote. You've got to be able to back up, how does this quote support the theme, okay? So what we've got to do is we've got to be able to trust ourselves to make leaps. Now on this video, I'm gonna show you a very basic example of making that leap. In the annotations video, 
I'm gonna show you directly from the text of Frankenstein how I make that leap. So this one is just a very basic, straightforward example so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna show you that analytical leap here. All right, so say I have a quote like this from a text. It says, the sky went red with anger over, over the rocking boat. So maybe this is a book about fishermen, or maybe it's from the Bible when Jesus is on the seas. The sky went red with anger over the rocking boat. Okay, so we've got that quote. Now, I've pulled it out of my text. I know it's important, but I have to decide why. I have to analyze this quote. This can be very tricky for a lot of people because there's no right or wrong way to do this. There's no exact answer. There's no perfect analysis. You have got to come up with an idea and support it. Come up with an idea, support it. Come up with an idea, support it. And this can be really tricky. So let me show you kind of how I would approach this. So I see this, the sky went red with anger over the rocking boat. And the first thing I'm gonna do is pay attention to this text. Here's the words that stand out to me. The color red, the feeling of anger, and the motion of the boat. So I have to think, why would the author put this sentence in? Remember, I've told you guys that once a book makes it to you, millions of people, not millions, let me rephrase that, dozens of people have edited the text, looked over it, and made sure every word is supposed to be there. So there's a reason for every word in the books that you read. So your job as an analytical thinker is to decide, what's that reason? Why are these specific words in this text, okay? So I'm deciding about red, anger, and rocking boat. Why did the author feel this was necessary to put it in the text? So maybe I'm gonna think about the author's use of color. That's our theme, okay? Just like you would choose parent-child relationships or beauty for Frankenstein. So maybe the author uses color repeatedly throughout the text. What is the purpose of the color red here? Okay, the color red serves two purposes. It's literal, the color of the sky. But it's also figurative, which means it shows an emotion. So I've got this one simple sentence and I've already pulled all this detail out of it. It's got a word in there that's super loaded. The color red is literally the color of the sky and it's also figuratively the emotion felt in that kind of dangerous sea with the rocking boat. So the color here is really important and I know it's important, but now I have to make a leap without asking the author, without asking anyone why. Why did this author choose to put the color red in this sentence? So I've got to make a leap. I know that it's literally the color of the sky, but that doesn't seem very important here. And I know it's figurative. It shows the emotion of anger. And I think that's the one I want to latch on to because it seems like there's more there. So I'm going to take this figurative meaning and I'm going to make a leap. I'm going to make an assumption as to why the author chose that color, right? And I'm gonna start my sentence. You can use this sentence starter. The author uses red to show how the color of the sky added to the angry feeling of the storm.
Now, I didn't get this from anywhere except my own mind, okay? I know red and anger are connected together here. I know that the color red is an angry color. I'm thinking of like the anger emoji, right? So I'm connecting these together in my mind and I'm gonna assume that that's why the author uses the color red. I could be wrong. Maybe it's just the author's favorite color. But in literature, it doesn't matter too much. All that matters is that I can back it up, okay? So my claim is that the author uses red to show how the color of the sky added to the angry feeling of the storm. Now, somebody asks me, where did you get that from? I point straight back to the text. I say the author says the sky went red with anger. So the author is showing me that red is connected to the word angry, and I can back that up. So even though I've never met the author, I never sat down with the author, I can connect those two things. So all I'm doing is I'm making an assumption and backing it up with evidence from the text. And that's how we create an analysis. In the chapter five annotations video, I'll show you how to do this, but with some text from Frankenstein. And as always, as you're working on this evidence tracker and writing your analysis, make sure that you're emailing me, texting me, sending me a comment on your Google Doc, and letting me know I need help, I'm having trouble making this analysis, and we can always work through this together. As always, after this video, please enjoy the chapter five read aloud, chapter five, another incredible chapter in Mary, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I think you're gonna like it. We're picking up the pace here, and you're about to see your first glimpse of the monster. So after this, enjoy the chapter five read aloud of Frankenstein, and I look forward to hearing from all of you. Miss you guys.